Drinking is great for like four shots. Every shot after is like saying the N-word in public. You might get away with a few, but eventually you'll suffer liver damage. Now, I didn't always drink in college. Like a bi girl, I'd be straight on the weekdays and experiment on the weekends. But when I did drink, I went hard with the goal of nailing someone with my hammered body. And my favorite way to drink was by playing games. Because ingesting mass quantities of alcohol implies you have a problem. But if you add cards, it's somehow fine. Now, I loved most games, but the problem was they were too common. Every house had pong, kings, keg stands, but I wanted something that no one else had. So after doing a little research, I came across the greatest beer drinking game, Battle Shots, which was essentially Battleship with shot glasses. Given the term getting blasted, a whole new meaning. So I got some pizza boxes, mapped out a grid, added some flair, and BAM! Had a beautiful Battle Shots board. Oh, that board brought so many positive memories. I can't tell you how many women I smashed from the opening line of, I bet you're trash at strategy games. And beyond women, it was great at making friends. There is no better bonding experience than competing over who gets drunk the fastest. Needs to say, I love the game, but when I graduated later that year, I knew I had to give it up. You can't binge drink in the real world without coming off as sad. So I gave the game to my homie, saying I hope this brings you as much poon and friends as it brought me. Fast forward six months later, and I go back to campus to visit some friends. When I arrived, they had battle shots set up, being like, you wanna play? I'm like, hell yeah. So we play a game, and as soon as it's ending, a bunch of people arrive. When they see the board, they're like, yo, let's play a tournament. And this is where I fucked up. You see, normally I just play one game, let alone multiple in a row, but because I had alcohol in my system, I was not thinking correctly. And by the time game three rolled around, I blacked out. I wake up the next morning in immense pain to the sound of I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. My head is spinning, I'm super dehydrated, and I'm slowly going insane from that fucking tumor sound. I can tell it's coming from the corner of the room, so I go to stand up and immediately collapse. My right leg is throbbing, and my jeans are covered in blood. I am barely comprehending reality, but I am motivated to make that sound sound. Stop. So I start dragging myself on the ground, pushing aside pizza boxes and beer bottles till I find the computer and hammer fist it off. Then I start dragging myself to the bathroom and find my friend brushing his teeth who says, Rough night? I'm like, water. Water. So he gets me a glass and I proceed to spend the next six hours on the couch trying to regain brain function. Eventually reality starts to come back and I ask my friend, ugh. What happened last night? He's like, you don't remember? I'm like, I remember playing Battle Shots, and then I blacked out. He's like, well, first, you destroyed Battle Shots by spilling cranberry juice all over it. Then you drunk dialed your ex on speakerphone and asked if she was available for a quick smash session. Ugh, tits. What did she say? She said you only call her when you're drunk and hung up. I'm like, that's accurate. Okay, then what happens? Then we all went out to the bar, and you're doing your usual walking around, telling everyone how much you love them. Things are going great until you walk outside. Knowing you were f***ed up and probably up to no good, I decided to follow you. You then get up on this rusty sewer grill and start pissing. I tell you that's a bad idea, and your response was, Woo! Mid woo, the grate collapsed and you fell in. I'm like, wait, I, I fell in? He's like, yep right in the sewer. And as I looked around me, I thought I was covered in dirt when I was actually covered in shit. Disgusted, I'm like, okay, then what happened? He's like, well, I couldn't get you out, and you weren't helping, so I went back into the bar and got a few people who helped drag you out. Then I put you on my shoulders and firemen carried you back to the house. I'm like, damn, dude, that's really nice of you. And, uh, I'm sorry to say this, but I think I destroyed your laptop. He's like, what the f***? I'm like, bro, I was in pure agony, and you played ten hours of Peter saying I'm not a tumor? Uh, what do you think was gonna happen? He's like, I should've left you in that hole. hole. And the word hole, hole echoed hole. in my brain. Hole. I'm like, I gotta see this. So the next day I went to the alleyway and get my way to the sewer grate. And my friend was not kidding. There was literally a seven foot concrete hole with blood still on the wall. Probably from my busted leg. And I remember just being like, holy shit. If my friend wasn't here to get me out and I woke up in some saw-like dungeon, I'd probably have a panic attack. I mean, I could barely drag myself to the bathroom the next morning, let alone Shawshanking myself to freedom. That's when I had the realization that alcohol is a cruel bitch. It's like Planned Parenthood of the mind, where it keeps aborting all your good decisions. That's why I decided to go with Plan B and just smoke weed instead. It's all the fun of escaping reality without the fear of waking up as a Ninja Turtle. Kill me. Kill it! Kill it with fire! Mmm, you know what you want to do? Oh, you want to push that subscribe button. Oh, push the button. Push the button.